Hey everybody and welcome to NWR TV. I'm John Rarden and joining me for this special preview first impressions look at uh, Pokemon Let's Go Eevee is my wife Katie. Hello! And we have been playing this game, we're about four hours in, uh, yeah. so we're just going to give kind of our first, our quick initial impressions of the game. There will be a review coming soon, uh, but unfortunately there were not uh, early review copies provided for this game to us. So uh, that will be soon, uh, but it's not quite yet. So this is your your way to tell what we think about the game in case you are going to buy it today. Of course, I think the big thing that a lot of people noticed in the trailers uh, is that there's some pretty big gameplay changes in this entry. Um, so Pokemon has always been a game about uh, catching Pokemon and fighting Pokemon. And I think this one, it's much more separated than it ever has been before. So when you're out in the wild, if you come across a Pokemon, which you can see... Yeah, you can see them, which is kind of awesome. Yeah, uh, which does a lot... Yeah, it has a lot of... The changes in this game have a lot of, like... Like, you change one thing, and it has, like, a resounding effect on a lot of other things. So being able to see Pokemon in the wild makes, like... Like, there aren't really random encounters. Which is nice, because random encounters can can really kill you as far as whether or not you want to play the game. If you're always yeah. getting hit with random encounters, it's yeah. like, well, well why do I do this? Yeah, like, we just got through, so we just got past, or we're a little bit past now, um, the, what is it, is it Moon Mountain Pass? Yes. Is that what it's called? Um, yeah, which is, like, the first kind of, like, dungeon you get to. It is called Moon Mountain Pass, right? No, that's for freaking Star Fox Adventures. <laughs> um, what's the play, hang on, I have to Google it. Mount Moon? Is it just called Mount Moon? I think it's just called Moon Mountain Pass. That's funny. Mount Moon, not Moon Mountain Pass. Um, so Mount that Moon... sounded right, though. I was yeah, like, it, yeah, sure. It's close enough. Uh, so Mount Moon, the first like cave you go in, it's full of Zubats and stuff like that. But because you can actually see all the Pokemon, like Mount Moon is so much less intimidating oh, and so much yeah. less annoying. Because it's like, if you don't want to fight something, you can just go around it, usually. Usually. I've had a couple instances, and we can get into this when we talk about, like, the controls, where I'm walking, and I and I see the Zubat, and then I want to get away from it, and then it just, but it's it happening just calls to me. To you. It just calls well, And occasionally, <laughs> yeah. I mean, they will, like, they spawn, you know? They're not, you don't see all of them all the time, and so, like, they'll disappear and spawn. And so we've had a couple times where one just kind of, like, spawned right under our feet. Yeah, it spawned um, literally right on top of me, and it was after, like, three or four, like, just couldn't get away from encounters and I was like I I was like losing it <laughs> like, but you can so many. you can at least as far as we've been able to tell you can always run you can run and it's pretty easy to do that and I it doesn't seem like if we've seen any so like I haven't seen any instances of us not being able to run from a from a wild Pokemon yeah um but it also means so so in Moon Mountain Pass you have like 99 percent dang it <laughs> Mount Moon, you have like 90% uh, Zubats, but then you also have uh, the occasional Clefairy. Oh, yeah. And you can just, and, and they're rare. I'm souped. But you can just see them. Like, so yeah. if you, like, you're walking through and you see a Clefairy, it's like, oh, there's a Clefairy. And you're and like, you trying to get over it. there and avoid yeah. the Zubats to go get it. So it it's not that it's, you know, better or worse or anything like that necessarily. And I'm sure there are definitely people who will who will really dislike it. Yeah, there will be some very strong opinions. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. One way or the other. Um, but... It has a, like, it really changes the feel. It really does. It feels of, more of an adventure and less of a task. Yeah, it, it definitely, it it takes away a huge chunk of the, like, classic JRPG-ness of it, mm -hmm. uh, which I don't mind not having, because it, it's taking away my least favorite part of JRPGs, yeah. um, which is a bunch of really slow, turn-based random encounters when yeah. you're just trying to walk across a room. The fact that I can... Yeah, walk across a room or get from point A to point B with minimal interference is really nice because I feel like I'm legitimately progressing yeah. instead of like just constantly running into things that it's like yeah. this is wasting my time what could have taken me 10 minutes is now taking me 30 but it, and at the same time it does so it's it's weird though because then it you know you have stuff like um you get like like you have repels and you have escape ropes and stuff like that yeah and those all seem kind of pointless they like, do kind of seem like, a little pointless like i don't need a repel i'll just walk around the zoo bat i don't need yeah. an escape rope because i can just leave yeah and and i can just, like it's not that hard to get out i mean i guess sure. i guess later on when you get to stuff where it's a lot like you're several layers deep in a, in a dungeon then i guess maybe the escape rope would still be useful but it's 
the fact that you're not, you know, just kind of like trudging through with your Pokemon on its last hit point, yeah. trying to avoid random encounters, like you're just, you can just leave. Yeah. Um, um, although I will say that what's nice about the random encounters, say, at Mount Moon, as far as, like, being able to walk around them, it actually is a little bit trickier when you're in the grassy areas. So if you're coming up against um, Rattata, and mm -hmm. they're tiny, and, mm -hmm. and when you're standing in the grass, it's knee height, it, there is a bit of, um, they're obscured by the grass, so there's... I don't know. You can still walk around them. You just have to be diligent about what kind of yeah, area it's, you're it's being. It's still you're very easy to accidentally run into a Pokemon. Very easily. And it, you do almost feel a little bit bad because it's like, oh no, I've, been t I've, I've run into you. I've stepped on your face and I'm so sorry. And now I'm going to shove you with well, a tiny ball. <laughs> and we did find, like, we got, like, you can let a Pokemon out of its Pokeball and have it follow you around. Oh, best feature. And so feature. our Kakuna evolved while we were in Mount Moon. And to Beedrill. Right. And apparently Beedrill is huge. Yeah. Well, I think our Beedrill is just big. He's massive. He's and big. So he's like the size we, of a person. We let him out of the out of the Pokeball and he just takes up like the whole screen. The whole screen. And he's yeah. and he's and is so like just difficult to like see where you're going and see the wild Pokemon because that Beedrill just takes up so much space. So what's funny is when you're thinking about this in context of real life, because now we have the trailer for Detective Pikachu, and yeah. it's like, if you were legitimately walking around and you saw a Beedrill the size of yeah. a person, I'd shit my pants. <laughs> it's, he's huge. <laughs> he's so big. Um, and I guess, and we'll come back to, to talk about difficulty in a second, but I guess we should note, um, as might kind of be obvious, so we've played through pretty much all of the game that we've played so far. Um, we've been playing cooperatively. <laughs> Yeah. Um, where, where Katie's player one, um, she's kind of controlling things, and then I come in as a support trainer by just shaking a Joy-Con, which is the weird, like, I was, like, pushing A on the Joy-Con and trying, like, how do I, yeah. I know I can join somehow, and then it's that you have to shake it, um, which is There's weird. a lot of shaking in this game. Yeah, Look yeah, a lot of, I mean, you can, you don't have to use the motion controls, you yeah. can just push a button if you want to set it up that way, um, but yeah, so I was able to just join in, just kind of drop in, the support trainer just takes, their Pokemon will always be the second Pokemon in your party. So you can, which, which is nice, you can be strategic about what Pokemon end up right. on the field together. Yeah. For a while we had, so Bellsprout ended up being the MVP of our team. Right. And yeah, so we... You, when as you're you know progressing through and, and your Pokemon are getting different skills, you can be pretty strategic about how you know if Eevee's gonna have this skill, Bellsprout can have this skill, and then you can annihilate. Well, yeah, we we just kind of strolled through Misty's. Is that Cerulean City? Yeah, Cerulean is City, where Misty is, and we just kind of we walked into it because our Eevee we got an Electric type move for Eevee, and then Bellsprout obviously had Plant type, yeah, uh, or Grass type. Grass type. Um, and we just kind of walked into Misty's gym and just just tore it up. Yeah, and I almost felt bad. Yeah, it was mostly like one hit KOs on almost everything in there, including yeah. like Misty's Pokemon. Yeah, there's only one or two instances where you where know Bellsprout had to come. Something managed in. to get a hit in. Yeah, and yeah, uh, but but that does lead to so when you play cooperatively. For, first of all, this game is not <laughs> at least so far. Um, if you have the most basic understanding of, like, Pokemon and, like, matching up types um, to, like, take advantage of weaknesses, this game is not hard. It really isn't. It's so, it's very In my easy, ver and maybe it gets harder, maybe it's just, yeah. we're just at the beginning, um, but it's it's definitely easier than Red and Blue are at oh, this point. yeah. Yeah. Like, well, it's... A lot of the Pokemon I've played throughout my years, um, most significantly for me, Sapphire was was the one that I played mm -hmm. a lot. It's it does feel almost like I just am kind of walking through it. Oh and, yeah, and, and I don't hate that. No, it it does because it feels it's weird. It feels like it's yeah. supposed to be that way, you know. And it's and I think it's it's amplified by because we are playing co-op. Like when you when you play in co-op, it it doesn't level up the enemies to deal with the fact that you get two attacks for every one attack they get. Yeah, it does almost feel a little unbalanced. Right, and so so most of the time, like most of the trainers we've encountered have one, maybe two Pokemon, but even the ones that have two are only sending out one at a time. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah. like, if even if we don't have a type advantage, you get two Pokemon using quick attack, and you get two attacks in before the enemy can do anything. 
Yeah. And so it is playing in co-op kind of feels like it breaks the game somewhat. Yeah. Because you're just overpowered. That it does nothing to... Now, the one instance I think co-op can be even is when you go up against Team Rocket. Yeah, yeah, when you fight... Because you Jesse and James both And at they the both time. send out a Pokemon um, at the same time. But, and I couldn't tell... And this is probably this will be maybe this will be cleared up in the actual reviews. We're just going off of limited experience. But when we got to that point, I don't know if I accidentally exited out of the game or if it was because you were required to use two Pokemon in that fight. It actually you were the only one controlling that fight. Like yeah. It, it didn't give me control of one of our Pokemon. We got two out there, mm -hmm. um, but you were just controlling them. And I assume it's because that was an actual like a tag team fight. Yeah. And so it just defaulted to having you control everything. Which I thought was weird, since we already had two players. Mm -hmm. um, but maybe that's just how it was structured. You know, there's, and... there's a lot in this that that sort of feels not really planned out. At it times. does kind of feel a little haphazard. Like, like, so there's that. You know, not be like, why, why would you take control away from the second player in the one instance where the second player being there actually makes sense? Yeah. Um, but then there's stuff like, so all of the, we're, we're playing this game, we, we got the, the bundle with the, the Pokeball, Pokeball Plus, but it gives you, even even though when you start the game, you tell it what controller you're using, right? Because it tells yep. you, you know, sync your controller and it has yep. like the Joy-Cons and the Pokeball and all and that stuff. Yeah. Um, and so you sync the Pokeball, it knows that's what you're using, and it still gives you all the controls as if you're using a Joy-Con and tells you like, oh, it's push so... Y. And it's like, and what I'm is like, Y? And I'm like, my, my controller has click of the analog stick and unlabeled button on top. Yeah, it's I a have little... no idea what Y is. We happen to discover that if you shake the Pokeball, right, shaking is Y. Is Y. And there is no X button. There is no X button. You may so, not leave. <laughs> and so it'll tell you to push the X button. You can't. Nope. There isn't one. <laughs> and it and so you just like, I mean, you can do everything with the Pokeball, but they don't tell you, like yeah. the controls don't tell you based on what controller you're using, or even just give you the controls for all the control. Like, yeah. it's- it There's no, like, so if you're gonna introduce a new kind of controller like the Pokeball Plus, which is, which is a great idea on paper, it's it's really interesting, um, but the fact that there's no, like, hey, FYI, like, as you're starting up the game, there's no, like, FYI, if you're yeah. using this, this is how it works. Which I think would greatly benefit the game, because I've had several instances where I am going about you know, the game, doing stuff, and I cannot, for the life of me, make this Pokeball do what I want it to do. It's actually right. Well, you're just kind of fiddling thing. with, like, every, you're, like, pushing yeah. the stick and, like, shaking it, and you're like, I don't know which button does what. Right. And it, it would be as simple as if, if just on the stick it said A. Right. And on the top of it there was just a little <laughs> bit that was engraved that said B, and then somewhere in the game they said, hey, shake it for a Y. Yeah. Like, that, it would do everything. Um, it would alleviate 90% right. of my problems. and it problems. would fix all the problems. But as it is, you're just kind of fumbling around. Um, and, and fumbling is a, is a good word yeah. to describe. So I'll talk about typing. Yeah. Because I was in control <laughs> at this point. So so the Pokeball Plus is... Sensitive what, little bitch. Maybe, maybe an, like an inch and a half across at most. Yeah, it's... It's very, it's, it's tinier than you think itty, it's going to be. Bitty. It's so small. It's it's the analog stick on the Pokeball Plus is significantly smaller than a Joy than a Joy-Con's yeah. analog stick, which is already minuscule. Yeah. And the so, fact that it's smaller makes me question like who the heck designed this? Right. So it's 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 just too small. Much too small. Well, I okay. Even a child would find would be like this is quite small. Yes. Like the fact that I, as a grown adult, am, I can't, like, I can't properly function with the controller makes me sad. It makes you feel like maybe you're too old to be playing Pokemon. Let's never. Go, <laughs> never. Um, but yeah, so we're, at the beginning of the game, you're, you're naming your character and you're naming your Pokemon and all this stuff. Naming your, your friend rival, question mark, who's it, not Gary, because not Gary, Gary shows up later and you're like, wait, so you I just thought have you a were BFF. my rival. Right. Meanwhile, I was about to like name our rival Dickweed because I thought he was Gary, <laughs> yeah. when in reality he's a nice young man. He's and a like, lovely young and guy. And the Gary, who, who, Blue, I guess it's not yeah. Gary, but it, it's it's, it's Gary. Gary. Um, is shows up later, and I was like, well, the, wh 
who's this guy that I named Kyle? Um, <laughs> it's that moment, it's like, he's not who I thought he was! Yeah, it, it was a big plot twist. Sorry for <laughs> ruining it for you. Um, <laughs> Gary's yes. still a dickweed, though, just in yeah, case you're curious. You can tell just by looking at him. Yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, so, so typing in the names, because that analog stick is so small, the slightest little, like, as you're, you, and you have to click, to be clear, pushing A on the on the Pokeball is clicking the analog stick down. Yes. And so if you don't click just right in the middle, you're going to slip to one side, and then your cursor will move to a different letter and click that one instead. Yes. And It took us several oh, man, tries to Typing name. a name yeah. with that thing is just awful. It's, it, it, it's like, it, oh, ha, ha, well, funny no, the first time, and then, like, tears well, of rage. It gets bad when you're trying to select a move. Oh, and yeah. And then you're, like, accidentally choosing, or, that. you know... Do you want to forget a move to choose a new one, and then you flick to the wrong one? Yeah. Like, it's... it's you yeah. You really have to be careful with you that You do. Thing. Well, and there was an instance of me, I was fighting a random trainer, as you do, and I wanted to use Quick Attack, but I was just... I didn't click it right in the center, I clicked mm-hmm. it slightly down, and it flipped all the way back up to the top um, yeah. move option, and it was just normal tackle. Now, you can go back and... Well, you can if you're in co-op. Oh, the that's The only reason right. we were able to go back is because cause we I was the co-op. next person up, yep. and so I could go back to let you re-choose your move, but normally that would just do the move. Yeah, which and is... so you'd just kind of be stuck with be... whatever you accidentally selected. Yeah, if, yeah, you get stuck, and if you're trying to be intentional about something, it, it kind of takes away your control of that. Yeah. The issue I have with the Pokeball, mainly, is that when you're it's sitting in your hand... And it will, because it is a sphere, right. it will rotate. with And, like, it has no, outside of that analog stick, there's, like, no indication like orientation yes. to it. Yeah. Um, so, you know, John and I are just playing casually on the couch. We're reclined. We're not paying attention to how our controllers are sitting in our hand. And I kept walking off of ledges. <laughs> You wind up this whole path, fight a bunch of traitors, and then you have like a quick way down. Well, I kept falling off those ledges and having to wind my way back up. And I was like, what the heck? And I looked down at my hand, and my Pokeball was oriented 90 degrees incorrectly. Right. And you can't, you have to look at it to see that because it's yeah. a sphere. It's a sphere. And, <laughs> and when I was trying to capture Pokemon, I missed. Oh, well, and, and, so many. Right, you capture Pokemon by default if you're playing with motion controls. Yeah. Um, you capture Pokemon by, by swinging yes. your controller of choice. Um, and so, yeah, with the Pokeball, if it's oriented sideways, then when you go to swing, the game thinks you're, like, chucking a Pokeball over your shoulder. Yeah. Like, it, 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 it just doesn't goes register twing. the throw right. Yeah, and so... Like, so you really in left field. It took us a while because it was like like Katie would be throwing these pokeballs just in every direction and, and I just couldn't, couldn't get it. And then I'd try once use it because I'm just using a regular Joy-Con, which is very easy to tell where it's pointed, yeah. and just you know quick throw, perfect hit, and then we got it. Yeah. And it was hilariously infuriating for you. I oh, think. it was so it was maddening because it's it. Here's the thing: I'm not incompetent, and this was levels of incompetency that I have never displayed before. <laughs> and I was, I was, I was getting heated. Um, but then I realized my Pokeball was oriented like upside down. And it's yeah. like, well, what? <laughs> yeah, it's it's not uh, it's a it's cute. One, it okay. So oh, let's, it's super one, cute. And the cool thing is, um, so you can kind of like the Poke Walker from Soul Silver and Heart Gold. Like you can load a Pokemon onto it, mm-hmm. and then like take it with you, and it you can like hold down the analog stick. This is while the game is off. By yeah. the way, this is just you just have the Pokeball with you. The game is off. Um, you can like hold down the analog stick yep. and like you hear the Pokemon's cry from yep. inside. You can like shake it and hear it scream at you for shaking it. Yeah, and it does feel like like I'm like battering my Pokemon. Right. Like fishy, fishy, are you and, in there? And at this point, because like we just kind of loaded it onto there, be like, oh cool. Like that that was the last yeah. thing we did before we recorded this. And so we don't know what it does, <laughs> but we do know that we can load it. So stay tuned for us to figure out what that does. Uh, right. But you can load it on there. It's cool. It's really cool. Um, and then, you know, take that with you. Uh, it's just, I don't know, it's a cute It's a cute little feature that it, I don't know if it does anything significant for you in your game or for that Pokemon as far as abilities. I assume you get 
like berries or some experience or something. I, I don't know. So. I don't know. Um, I assume it's something more than what it is. But anyway, it's just a cute feature that I think is, it's not super up there as far as like the things that I would get this game for. Right. It's not is a bad it, bonus. Yeah, is it worth 40? I think the, that controller is like forty nine ninety nine. Yeah. But I mean, so is it is it worth that? No. no. I mean, especially as a <laughs> terrible controller. Yeah, like it, it's not a very good controller. Yeah, you're, it, you're buying it purely to hold your Pokemon. Just just be aware that if you buy the Pokeball Plus, you are buying it as a terrible Tamagotchi. Yeah. Tama, Tamadachi? Tama, tomo, Tomogachi. Tomogachi, yes. Tomodachi is the Nintendo game. Yes. Yes, yeah. So if you're buying it, just be aware that that's what it is uh, and a terrible controller. Yes. Um, don't buy it as as an extra controller. If you want to feel more like a Pokemon trainer throwing their Pokeball, then sure, it is But cute. But at the same time, you'll feel like a bad Pokemon trainer because odds are you'll have it oriented wrong and you won't throw the ball in the right direction anyway. Yeah, you'll just be hitting your Pokemon on the head. Right, so it's, you know, it's, <laughs> if you just want to play the game, I think the Joy-Con does just fine. The Joy-Con is yep. a, yep, Joy-Con is perfect. Perfectly fine. Yep. Um, but let's let's real quick, uh, kind of before we wrap this up, just talk a little bit about just the presentation in general. Mm -hmm. um, this definitely is. I mean, it it's HD. Um, yeah. As at a glance, it, it, maybe it's 1080. I haven't stood really close to the TV or done any pixel counting. Don't it, stand too close to your it, television. It, phone. Sure. I mean, just looking at the video feed that I have on the computer right now, it, it yeah. I think it's 1080. It, it certainly isn't anti-aliased in any way. Like it's a very raw 1080 image but I think that's what it is mm -hmm. um, it is definitely I, I'm sure this isn't the way it actually works but it it really feels like the sun and moon engine but in HD yeah it, I think that would, it, that would be a really it a good looks way like to if you it. emulated sun and moon on a computer and yeah. ran it at 1080 it would look very similar to this yeah and, and it, it it's it it looks nice it is, it is technically an HD Pokemon yes. game, but it is not a visually impressive game. It looks a lot, it, we talked a bit about it, it reminding us of like like Animal Crossing yeah. or, yeah. or Harvest Moon or something like that, where it's, it is a very simple, clean art style. Yeah. Um, the characters look nice, the Pokemon themselves look nice, the environments look bland as hell. Yeah. Um, when you're in a fight, You'll have grass around you and none of it moves. It's all just mm -hmm. static. Well, imagery. if your camera it pans too far up, you do see that there's just a black. Right, there's no sky. There's yeah, no sky. It, there's just little things like that that really make it feel like this is, like, kind of a 3DS game on Switch. Which um, I think is it, interesting because the Switch is not. It's not like the Switch isn't powerful. I mean, right? Oh, they they absolutely. And I think I think it's just the result of this is probably a. a fairly quickly made game. For all I know, this could even be a game that started its life on 3DS and then yeah. when the Switch did well, was like, no, let's do it over there instead. Like, Or maybe they were curbing their bets so if the Switch didn't do well, they could still bring it back to 3DS mm -hmm. or something like that. Who knows? I think this game would look amazing on 3DS. It, it really does feel like it could totally run on 3DS. Sure. Like, it, it doesn't feel, I mean, it feels like it could run on a cell phone. Yeah, it really um, could. <laughs> which maybe that's what, maybe they're trying to keep kind of the Pokemon Go aesthetic. Yeah, um, you. The fact that you can connect your Pokemon Go, which we haven't to, done yet, we haven't done yet, but it's an interesting concept. It's a thing that you can do that we cannot offer our thoughts on. No, once again, this is but just the pre. This is right. just our first impressions. Right. The review will be more but it's, detailed. But I guess, I guess, general thought. Oh, and the music is very nice. The it's, music is it's very nice. It's all the old music, but it's like really nicely orchestrated. Yeah. And the it's, it's there's very, a familiarity here that I think. It, OG Pokemon players will appreciate. Oh yeah, yeah, it's 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 curbing off nostalgia hard, um, and it some is. people will find that extremely annoying. It does it does what it's trying to do quite well. Yes. Um, it also for Eevee and for Pikachu, they both have um, like updated uh, sounds. Oh yeah. So whenever a Pokemon spawns in, or you hear a Pokemon's cry, or whatever, for what 148 of them. Yeah, 148. <laughs> like it's. It's their 8-bit yeah. Game Boy cry. The weird, like, just bit-crunched, yeah, yeah, terrible, terrible sound. It really is startling when you but, don't expect it. Right, but for Pikachu and Eevee, it's their modern voices, yeah. which is kind of weird. It is a little weird. And um, it, 
And I don't, there's this part of me that doesn't understand why they did that. I could be wrong about this because I'm going off of just being very tired and playing just a little bit of the game. But, but we caught a Pikachu, and our Pikachu says Pikachu, right? Yes, our Pikachu okay. does say so Pikachu. So it's, it's not even just that it's the two starters that you get, it's, or can get. Yeah. It's, it's any, presumably any Eevee or any Pikachu will have their modern voice. Yeah. Whereas every other Pokemon has their bit crunched voice. <laughs> bit and crunched. it's, and it's, I don't like it. I don't it's, either. It's weird, and I wish I could either update them all or have them all be their original sounds. Right, or I guess- like one or the other. I mean, I guess you could throw an option in the options menu that's like original cries or modern cries or whatever. Yeah. But yeah, it, it's it's very weird and and I, like I always, the hearing like when you're walking through the world, like we were walking through Viridian Forest and I don't know what Pokemon it was. Sure. But it was, but it had this very low, yeah. terrifying, like what was that? Cry. I don't know which one it was. But yeah, so we'd, we'd hear it, it would spawn in somewhere in Viridian Forest, and we'd hear it just like, <laughs> and we're just like, the <laughs> what, what that? was that? <laughs> like, it was, and that's, it's one thing when it's coming in through like a tiny Game Boy speaker, but it's like coming through our TV speakers in the middle of the night, and it's like, that was terrifying. Like, what in the world was that? Um, but yes, yeah, so kind of like a War of the World sound, and you're like, they're right. coming for us. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it's a very odd thing. It is very odd. I, I will say it's if you're a hardcore Pokemon fan, I don't know that this is... I don't think you're not going to have fun. Yeah. I mean, I think it's it's just fun to see this world in HD. Um, and, and, and some updated here's and there. Yeah, and it's, you know, they've done some clever stuff. Um, and, and if you're open to a different kind of, of Pokemon game, then I think there's, there's something we enjoyed here. And yeah. I, I will say, like, for you, who hasn't really been, like, active, like, you don't play a ton of video games. Yeah, no, I'm definitely not what you would call but, an avid gamer. But you did grow up with Pokemon Blue. I did. And so there's definitely a, like, like this game is, is really targeting you. Yes, they targeted the, me quite well. Right. I'm very sentimental. So when it comes to this stuff, I'm like just a puddle. I love this stuff. But I can understand from the perspective of someone who takes games a bit more seriously. Well, who's still, who's still playing Pokemon very actively. Yeah. Like it's 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 for you, it's you're coming back to this for the nostalgia. Sure. You really haven't been playing a bunch of Pokemon since then. Mm -hmm. You're not playing every single entry. It's just like here's this thing from when I was a kid. Oh, it's cool to come back to this and experience yeah. it in this like fun, simple way. Great. And yeah. like you, so for you it's like it's really this good. Is, this is like the most engaged I've seen you in a game for a while. Yeah. Whereas for me, I'm like I'm like this, this is crossing. I'm like this is fine. Um, I'm having more fun just, I will say, like, I, I love the co-op. Yeah, the like, co-op is really nice. It's, I'm enjoying playing this with you. There is an ease to it. Like, so when John asked me to play co-op, it's more, it almost feels like, God, it's going to be a lot of work. Whereas this, it's just, it's a very easy, light way to right. play with someone you want to play with. Um, and I like that. Right. Well, it's, it's feature. just drop in, drop out. Like, yes. I can just sit down, play. Um, There's no like, all right, I have menus. to sit down. Yeah, do it, it's this, very, do that. it's very simple, and I like that. But yeah, and I, I, I guess just one final thing I, I wanted to note on, um, just in kind of defense of the whole, because I know a, a, one of the major things you don't fight wild Pokemon in this game. You just yeah. catch them. You just catch them. And so, just in kind of defense of that as a concept, because I will say, for me, I wish this game had a hard mode. Yeah. Um, it's it's a little too easy so far. Yeah. Um, but I will say in defense of that structure, it kind of breaks up the gameplay a little bit because it makes a wild Pokemon encounter hugely different from a trainer encounter. It does. Like, there, you definitely feel like there's an elevated. Right. And so so now it's like when I get to somewhere with tall grass, I'm excited. Yep. Because it's I'm not going to go in and do a bunch of turn based battles. I'm going in. I'm looking for Pokemon. Mm -hmm. um, and, and it's a very different. It feels it's a very different experience because of that. Um, and, and while I don't know that this is necessarily, like, the peak version of that concept, mm -hmm. that breaking up of the two sides of Pokemon, of, of fighting trainers and, and fighting wild Pokemon, and making those not just both the same combat. Yeah. Um, I think there's something... There's be, something there's there. Something, right, yeah, I don't know if this is the final version of it, but it, it's worth kind of exploring. I, I, yes, I agree. And I think something that I 
I can only say from personal experience, but I feel like, and I said this before, um, I feel like there's an exploration element to it when I'm going, so when I'm going into an area where I know wild Pokemon are going to be, I am looking, actively looking for them. For example, we ran into a Psyduck, and I was like, I, I specifically want a Psyduck. Right, we like saw it like in the tall grass off of our, like it was yes. away from our path, but we saw it kind of off on the edge of the screen in the tall grass, it was, you know, like stop, we need to go get that Psyduck. Right, it felt new and fresh, but also familiar. Right, you don't get that same, I mean, if you're just walking past tall grass and you're like, I need to go in there in case there's a random encounter with a Psyduck, yeah. that's not quite the same thing as like, that that one. That, I need to go yeah. catch that side up. Like Which that's, our side up is a very big side up. He is a very big side up. We had him walking around, and it was the funniest thing. <laughs> but when you encounter a trainer, it is different, and so you aren't avoiding fights. You can you can gain because you're not you're not tired of them. Because yeah. I'm not tired of them, and so you can exper- you can get experience from catching Pokemon and fighting trainers, which is great. Um, because it would kind of be a bummer if you weren't just getting the experience all the time. Yeah. yeah um, you still get experience every time you catch a Pokemon. Yeah. Yeah. But... So you can you can technically <clears throat> grind... You can technically grind by going out in the tall grass and just catching a bunch of Pokemon. Yeah. Uh, and you get... Po- you have Pokeballs for days. You do... Pokeballs for days, you Everyone guys. gives you... Beating trainers gives you Pokeballs. There's Pokeballs yeah. everywhere. Um, we made a joke about Blue giving us his balls. Yeah, his great, two great his, balls. His two great blue balls. It yep. was... Yep. Yep, it's a good one. Yep. <laughs> Jokes were made. <laughs> um, but it just, it feels like they took a concept that we all love and we all know and just freshened it up. Yeah. It, they didn't make any drastic changes other than the catching the Pokemon. Um, so it still feels a little bit new. But you have the the familiarity. Yeah, it it, it definitely does. Like, it feels like a, a spin off, but maybe not as much spin off as you might think. It, I it, was honestly expecting this game to be like way more different than than what we played. Yeah, it, it still feels like Pokemon. Y- yeah, it, it feels like a different take on Pokemon. Um, and if you like it. If you don't like it, that's I think that's fine. Mm-hmm. Um, it is different for sure, but it doesn't feel like a dumbing down of Pokemon. It feels like a different take on Pokemon. If yeah, that makes sense. Okay, well, we'll wrap it up there. So, uh, so thanks for watching. Keep an eye out for a full review uh, once we've uh, once we've all had time to play these games. I think there's a review coming for both uh, Eevee and Pikachu because obviously, totally different experiences. Um, but yeah, keep an eye out. Uh, you can check out NintendoWorldReport.com for a whole lot more. Subscribe to this channel if you enjoyed the video. Give it a like. Leave a comment if you're playing this game. Let us know what you think of it so far. If you want to support this channel, you can check out Patreon.com NWR. If you just want to hang out and chat with us, there is a link to our Discord in the description. And you can join us there. Have a good time. Make some Nintendo-loving friends. And uh, until next time, goodbye. Bye.